Nate, as the ball game started, the Cavaliers jumped out on a 8-2 run. You guys took it, knotted it up at 8, and then didn't look back from that. What was the difference tonight in your approach and what you were able to accomplish? You know, it's do or die for us, and uh, we came out with a sense of urgency. I thought we did a good job of establishing uh, the pace tonight as well as the tempo. Uh, defensively, we were much more aggressive. Uh, 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 pressuring the ball and keeping the ball in front of us and not allowing them to, uh, you know, get to the basket uh, as they did in game five. And, you know, just we're much uh, we was better connected on both ends of the floor. I thought uh, the defense was connected. Uh, we were solid, um, offensively executed, uh, moved the ball, uh, attacked the basket, and uh, pretty much played that way for for the 48 minutes. <clears throat> Oladipo had a dramatic turnaround from the last three games. Uh, had you had conversations with him? Did you have any sense this was coming or that he had struggled with confidence? Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we've been talking after every game about, uh, you know, just different things that uh, he's seeing and, uh, you know, covering uh, the defense that, you know, their plan against him. And, you know, just continue to be aggressive. Uh, I felt like, you know, he was uh, at times pressing, uh, playing a little too fast. I thought tonight, really, he came out and played the same uh, game. He was knocking down his shots. Uh, he remained aggressive. And, uh, you know, whenever he's playing that way uh, offensively, uh, it really opens up a lot for the rest of our guys. Uh, so it was good to see him knocking down uh, his shot and just seeing our guys respond to this challenge. Uh, it was a big challenge for this for this team, uh, but they've responded all season long to challenges. Nate, to kind of piggybacking, piggybacking on that thought, um, you know, you've been in these type of situations as a coach and then a player more than a lot of guys you'll be coaching your son they have. Um, how much do you think your team can take from the fact that you guys have won in Cleveland this year, you've won a playoff game in Cleveland, and even the games you guys lost were close? How much do you really think that can help you come Sunday? Well, you know, basically that uh, challenge was presented to them tonight. You know, how, how, how bad do we want it? Um, you know, this was going to show, I thought, our character. And um, I thought these guys responded, you know, to all the things we had on the board about uh, this game tonight, you know, wanting to go back. You know, you really want to go back. And uh, you know, we never talked about losing. Uh, we talked about winning. And uh, they answered that with the way they played tonight, you know. Uh, so going back to Cleveland, we feel we got – a chance, you know. We got to play. We got to play better than we did uh, even tonight uh, to win that game. But we, we we definitely feel we have a chance. Nate, multiple multiple guys at practices and after games have mentioned that it, it's felt throughout this series like the pressure is not on you guys. It's always been on Cleveland. Felt very much like the pressure was on them tonight to close out. Now again, it's back to the you know they're supposed to win. You guys aren't. You mentioned kind of feeling like you have a chance. Does it feel more so though that you're kind of going freely into this that the pressure is completely off? Pressure's on both teams. You know, uh, we, you know, the, the loser goes home. So uh, there's you know uh, for us, you know, we take it one game at a time, and uh, we prepare ourselves for that next game. And you know, the next game is on the road. Uh, we understand the conditions we're playing in, uh, but to say they feel more pressure than than uh, the losers go home, and you know so it's pressure on both teams. Uh, we're not going to be satisfied with just going up there and playing a good game and you know losing it. Uh, we have an opportunity, and uh, we're going to go and try and take advantage of it. Nate, you guys have had some some tough losses in this series, but you've bounced back after each one. Does any of that surprise you, especially when you factor in the team you're playing with LeBron on it and the relative youth of your team? The, 
These guys have been doing this all season long, you know, and, uh, you know, bouncing back after a bad half, you know, uh, you know, we've been down a number of games at the, at the half and have uh, come back and won games, uh, you know, just as we've dropped games in uh, Cleveland. We're, we're not really focusing on uh, the Cavaliers of the past and, you know, what people are saying, the outside noise. Uh, we just focus on the next game and winning that game and uh, playing better than we did in our last game. And we're not, we're not looking or listening to anything other than that, you know. And uh, you know, one thing that we, we, we have talked about, uh, that out, the outside noise, what people are saying, uh, they can't help us. You know, uh, only people can help us are the people in that room, that locker room. Uh, you'd said, you mentioned before that, Vi that Victor playing well really empowers the rest of your team. Did you sense when he made that first three that this night might be more like the Victor that you've been able to rely on for the, throughout the year? We've, I've, I've believed in Victor all season long. And, you know, he's a, he's a kid that uh, he doesn't really uh, get down on himself. Uh, you know, whether he has a bad half or, or a bad game, um, you know, that play uh, the other night where um, we, he, you know, he had his shot blocked, uh, you know, he responded with aggressive play tonight. And uh, we believe in him. You know, he's, he's a kid that absorbs what you try to tell him. He tries to do uh, and play the game the right way. Uh, that it needs to be played out there on the court. Um, when teams are double teaming him, we're telling him to get the ball out. He did that. Uh, when he has single coverage, uh, take your shot. You know, attack. He did that. Uh, you know, he's having to, uh, you know, play both sides of the ball, guarding Corver. Uh, thought he did a better job on Corver uh, tonight. You know, so he just continues to come out and uh, show growth. And improvement. Nate, what you don't have a lot of game seven experience in that room. What can you tell these guys about what they're going to be dealing with on uh, Sunday? Really, for us, it's the same. We're facing the same thing uh, Sunday as we were facing tonight. Uh, we don't win; we go home. And uh, you know, the 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 way we have to do that is to do it together. Uh, you know, we have to leave everything we have out on that floor, uh, but we have to do it together. So, it, you know, we'll just be playing the second game of elimination, uh, and it'll be on their floor. You know, both teams have won and lost on their home floor. So, um, really similar to tonight, um, you know, we have to be the aggressors. We have to execute out there. And we have to uh, do that together. Last question, Kevin. Nate, uh, Domas has been a huge spark for you the past couple games. What have you seen from him that maybe he, he wasn't giving you those first few games of the series? As you mentioned, he has been huge. He's been big uh, defending, uh, you know, scoring. I thought we did a good job of recognizing uh, advantages tonight and getting the ball uh, to some matchups that we felt uh, uh, we could take advantage of. We showed a lot more patience, and, and part of that is due to making reads. Uh, Domas, they're switching guards on our fives, and, uh, you know, we have to take advantage of that uh, when they give us matchups like that.